St. Thomas University Journalism and the New Brunswick Beacon present The Basement Files. Hello and welcome to The Basement Files. I'm Natalie Sturgeon. And I'm Cody Peters. Here's our top stories. Transgendered lives in Fredericton remembered. Along with the victims of the Paris attack. And an organic food truck hits Fredericton. November 20th was a night of solidarity in Fredericton. The Transgender Day of Remembrance ceremony was held at the Crown Plaza. The Fredericton Gender Minorities Group hosted the event. Nathan DeLong reports. The standing room only crowd paused to remember transgender people who have been murdered worldwide this year. Every year since 1999, trans people and advocates pause and remember the lives lost to transphobic violence. 23 transgender women have been killed in the United States this year alone. The names of transgender people killed this year were read aloud before a moment of silence was held. Many of the names are people from Brazil. That country has the world's highest rate of trans violence. The transgender flag was flown at St. Thomas University on November 21st to honor Transgender Day of Remembrance. Transphobic violence may seem less prevalent in Canada, but in New Brunswick, the government doesn't fund gender reassignment surgeries. It's the only province that doesn't cover the cost of these procedures in Canada. Green Party leader David Kuhn. A huge problem. Uh, people need to be able to be who they are. And uh, in New Brunswick, we're putting barriers in the way to that happening. And in, in the broader society, I think there is a change afoot, which is good. There's an increasing uh, acceptance and understanding that uh, people need to be who they are. So um, that's, that's encouraging. Max Hathaway is transgender. He likes that Health Minister Victor Boudreau has met with trans advocates about how New Brunswick can improve. Uh, I think, I think, I think things are going to start changing. I really hope so. Reed Lodge co-chairs the Fredericton Gender Minorities Group. Um, I think events like this are really important just because it does bring attention to the fact that trans people are still facing violence. Um, and especially trans women of color have such a hard time just getting through the day without being targeted. Um, so I think it's good that, I mean, there's so many people here um, and they all kind of have that knowledge now to go home with. Other gender minorities group members told the crowd about their struggles with their identity. They gave advice to people in similar situations. Group member Mabel Wheeler stressed the need to have discussions about transgender issues. She said governments need to be aware about transphobic violence. Members of the transgender community say there are still many barriers regarding transgender health in New Brunswick, but they're pleased with the progress being made. For St. Thomas Journalism, I'm Nathan DeLong. Paris is also being remembered after it was attacked by terrorists on Friday the 13th. France was devastated by its second attack by ISIS this year. Fredericktonians came out in solidarity to show support for France last week. Many Canadians, though, are wondering what happens next. Daniel Elliott reports. The French flag flew at the Fredericton City Hall all last week in support of France after the attacks. The local YMCA participated as well by raising their peace flag at City Hall. Local students from Nashwax's Middle School joined in. They presented Woodside with a peace book as part of a school project. Before the attacks, the government committed to withdrawing from airstrikes in Syria and bringing in 25,000 refugees before Christmas. But some Fredericktonians feel Canada should now play a heavier role. And I think uh, Canada should join the fight, both militarily-wise, against ISIS because they're a serious threat uh, to all countries. But Lindsay Han says that's no reason for Canada to end its promises. Honestly, yeah, I think all of that is fueled by fear. I think it's great that our current government has committed to bringing in the refugees. I think we have a responsibility as Canadians to help people in need. She says that many worry about the government's short timeline, but says that doesn't mean that official channels won't be followed. Shauna Ryan is an international relations professor at St. Thomas University. He said we shouldn't be frightened about speculation that one of the attackers may have been a refugee. I think seven out of eight of the attackers were actually French and um, Belgian nationals. So you don't need to be uh, a Syrian refugee to commit terrorist attacks in France or almost any part of Europe. You just need to be a national who's returned home or who has been radicalized for other reasons. So I don't think that there's any particular benefit to ISIS, not that I can think of offhand anyway, um, to using the Syrian refugee situation the attacks have sparked mixed emotions for Canadians. There's been a great deal of sadness and support for our French allies, but still many fear for our safety at home. 
For the time being, Trudeau remains committed to fulfilling his promises. For Stu Journalism, I'm Danielle Elliott. Fredericton might be remembering, but they're also enterprising. A group of young entrepreneurs in the Fredericton area are starting a farmer's market on wheels. This will make the process of buying and consuming locally grown produce easier. Maria Burgos has a story. One of the only ways for Fredericktonians to buy locally grown food is going to the boys' farmer's market downtown. But this will change soon. Six innovative thinkers from Fredericton came up with a new approach, a food truck startup. The food truck will drive throughout Fredericton and to remote communities to sell local products such as vegetables. This idea was proposed less than two weeks ago by third-year leadership student Kelsey Hogan. So one of the ideas that we've had is to include a story about the local farmers with each of the uh, purchases. So if you're buying your carrots, for example, you have a story about the farmer who grew those carrots. So it's connecting people to their food, getting them more aware of the food system here and really making them more aware of just where it's coming from. These entrepreneurs are now making contracts with farmers interested in selling their products to the food truck. Only 5% of the food that is consumed in our province is locally grown. Sean McCollum is a fourth year journalism student and is part of this team. Uh, so to gain some customer validation before proceeding with our business model, um, we made a survey and we got a, just over 160 respondents and we found that 95% of people said that if uh, locally grown food was more accessible to them, they'd be more likely to buy it. Leslie Morell is the Boys Farmers Market Coordinator. There are people in the rural uh, part of uh, the city that don't have any way to get into the city, so therefore it's taking the, the healthy food to them and they can make that choice whether to buy it or not when it gets there, but it gives them the opportunity to do it. 89% of the people who answered the survey said they would use this service. It has become a reality that will be launched in a few months. For Stu Journalism, this is Maria Burgos. Another business is making headlines this week because of the design of its new cup. Starbucks has released their Christmas cups, but it's not bringing joy to everyone. It is a red cup with a classic white lid and a brown sleeve, but some say this is a war on Christmas. An evangelist, Joshua Furstein, from the United States posted a video saying Starbucks declared war on Christmas by removing decorations from their cup. Do you realize that Starbucks wanted to take Christ and Christmas off of their brand new cups? That's why they're just plain red. Starbucks issued a statement saying belonging, inclusion, and diversity are core values of their company. And, uh, I mean, look at this cup. You might as well call it a Satan sipper, is what you... <laughs> Some don't take the controversy seriously, but either way, the response has gone viral. Many customers saying Starbucks is just being a good business. Unlike the energy coffee gives us, the energy that runs our province is the topic of discussion this week. A presentation at the University of New Brunswick this weekend on energy generation sparked the discussion. Experts gave presentations on the different topics that influence our province. Mitchell Pearden has the story. Renewable energy is rapidly growing in New Brunswick. With resources like electric cars and the Mactuac Dam, it may seem like New Brunswickers are switching to a greener lifestyle. The University of New Brunswick's Association of Civil Engineering graduate students held an event on Saturday outlining the energy use in New Brunswick and the future of the capabilities of the province's production of it. Florence Allaire is the president of the association and she thinks it's important to hold these events for the public's interest and allow big companies to be transparent. Information to the public about such a hot topic so basically we decided to have another event like this and um, as engineers um, we know a lot about the science about stuff and it's sometimes I think a lot of people make decisions without knowing the facts behind um, their, the opinions they're forming. Donald McPhail is an expert in energy and its consumption in the province. He presented the background of the energy within the province at the event. I think energy is important in, in New Brunswick and energy is important everywhere really. We don't realize how much we use it. It's, we think of it as being uh, the energy or the, the gasoline we put into our car, but it's actually the, the power bill at home. One of the main issues surrounding energy is the different ways people want it from it being plentiful and low cost to it being available at a flick of a switch at all times of the year. This, however, is unrealistic with the amount of we currently use and the rate of production we need to maintain our technology-savvy lifestyle. Fail says, though we use a lot of electricity in the province, a lot of it is produced right here at home. In New Brunswick, we've got a pretty good mix of how we make electricity. It's from, it's from hydro, it's from nuclear, it's from 
from oil. Our biggest power plant is oil-fired, but it doesn't operate all the time. We have two gas-fired power plants. We have wind turbines. I'm probably missing something, but we have a very comprehensive set of power generation assets. And then we also use a lot of uh, oil just for, for home heating, for transportation, obviously. And we use natural gas in homes, uh, schools. Many of us take energy for granted. So next time you turn in your car or open your laptop, consider the time and effort it took to produce that energy. For St. Thomas Journalism, I'm Mitchell Pearden. It was raining cats and dogs in Fredericton over the weekend. The SPCA put on a public expo to bring the animal community together and raise some money for the shelter. Here's Ben Krauss with this story. The Fredericton SPCA held a pet expo this past weekend. The expo took place at the Capitol Exhibit Center where donations were accepted at the door. The pet expo was created eight years ago by Karen McGeehan. McGeehan is the Director of Marketing and Development at the Fredericton SPCA. Because there was a lot of animal organizations, home-based businesses, large corporations that didn't know each other existed. So what I did is created a venue where people could do sort of one-stop shopping as well as the vendors could find out who was who and, and who existed. Nearly 40 pet related vendors set up to sell their goods and services, including Grooming Tails Pet Salon. Eleanor is one of the dogs that gets groomed at Grooming Tails. Her owner and the owner of the salon is Nicole Henderson. I always knew I wanted to work with animals, I just wasn't sure where. I went to university, tried um, vet medicine, and then I I knew I was more creative, so I decided to do a more hands-on creative job, and I, I wanted to work with dogs and run my own business, and this is, <laughs> this is where I ended up. Various events were held, including a dog agility demo, where half a dozen dogs showed off their skills. Dogs weren't the only animals to make an appearance. Frisky felines and fuzzy parrots were also at the expo. Award-winning show cats stopped by a pose for pictures, and a ferret-loving society provided free ferret cuddles. One of the main attractions at the Expo was a silent auction and raffle. All proceeds from the Expo are going toward the Fredericton SPCA. In the end, vendors wrapped up what they would call a perfect weekend. For Stuart Journalism, I'm Ben Krause. After buying gifts for your furry friends, you can head downtown and buy more gifts on Black Friday. Black Friday sales have become a staple in the pre-holiday season in Canada. And some of the local stores in downtown Fredericton are getting in on the action. For more on the sales and the stores holding them, we go to David Bardwell. This might be the sort of store that comes to mind when you think of Black Friday, but some downtown businesses are aiming to change that. Endeavors is an arts and crafts store downtown. They were among the first businesses to engage in Black Friday sales. I think it's really important that downtown businesses do promote, um, whether that be Black Friday or Small Business Saturday or, or whatever we choose to do. I think it's important to have promotions. I really like Black Friday um, as a promotion as opposed to Small Business Saturday because it catches that value bargain chopper when they're out looking for other values as well. Randall says it's not just a matter of drastic markdowns either. A lot of interest is being placed by his stores on premium product lines that aren't normally put on sale. Go on sale so it's that one opportunity a year to get a really good deal on premium products for those who maybe couldn't afford a premium product otherwise or wouldn't have chosen to buy a premium product. It, it just gives a chance to sort of get those products out there and get people hooked. While Endeavors was among the first businesses to engage in Black Friday sales in Fredericton, others have joined in. Black Friday is really fun here. Um, I know that there's this negative connotation that surrounds it, um, and the way that we've avoided that is by not trying to do anything insane to really pull droves of people down, although we'll take droves of people if they come, but really just, you know, good, decent deals, um, nice in advance, uh, make it easy, and make it a fun day to come shop around. The Fredericton Chamber of Commerce helps promote downtown businesses and is part of the reason for Black Friday's popularity in the city. So Black Friday and all the downtown um, Fredericton holiday campaign stuff, we're, we're always on board because, you know, the more people are happy and shopping around downtown, the better it is for everybody. It's clear that local businesses in Fredericton are using Black Friday to combat big box stores. For St. Thomas Journalism, I'm David Bardwell. Bad weather and poor driving conditions made it difficult for Fredericton drivers on Monday. Early morning freezing rain caused multiple accidents in the city. It was estimated that we'd be getting 20 centimeters of snow, but we were fortunate and didn't get that much as weather conditions got better in the afternoon. Weather isn't stopping shoppers from getting what they need this year. November hasn't even ended, and people are already getting into the holiday spirit and getting their shopping done early with Christmas at the market. Maggie McLean takes us to the market. 
The local farmer's market was packed with people for their annual Christmas craft fair this past week. The event happened on Thursday and Friday from 10 to 9. Both main rooms of the market were filled with stalls selling different homemade wares, from Christmas decorations to food to knitted goods. Yvonne Karasiotis sells sewn items and has been doing it for 15 years. All hopefully practical for people to use. I have um, coasters with the little holder that you can use. And for people that sew and everything, they, instead of putting your threads on the floor, you can throw them into here. And pin cushions, needle cases, project bags, and the walker caddies. While many of the stalls sold things that were typical of a craft fair, there were also some more unconventional goods. Christiane Levesque works with metal and her table was filled with earrings made from empty bullet shells. Uh, everything has a sterling silver backing with a sterling silver post so that you don't react if you're sensitive to brass or other metals. Um, I am also working on different lines. I'm going to have rings soon, I'm going to have cufflinks and pendants. Although Levesque sells these things for a living, she says money isn't the only thing she gets out of doing metal work. This one here is just my, after the kids are in bed, I can go in my shop and relax and have fun and not have to think too much. But working with metal is just fascinating to see what can become of like a simple bullet that people throw in the trash. Right? Despite the gloomy weather, the event was still packed with people and Christmas cheer. For Stu Journalism, I'm Maggie McLean. That's our show for the week. Until next time, be sure to check out the MB Beacon for the latest reports from St. Thomas Journalism. For the Basement Files, stay warm. Mm -hmm.